All right, folks, so today we're going to be taking a look at a top 10 that I found in an issue of Coral Magazine. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Coral Magazine is, it is probably one of the best publications for reef tank hobbyists. So this top 10 that we're going to be talking about in today's video came from this publication on January 2018. And we're going to talk through some of their choices that they made on this top 10 list that consists of coral and invertebrates for a nano and or pico reef tank. Coming in at number 10 on Coral Magazine's micro tank species is the mushroom coral. And not only do they suggest the mushroom coral, they also suggest Recordias discosoma as well as Rhodactus. Now, I'm on the fence about the Rhodactus. This is an example of a Rhodactus coral right here. And I have not had a tremendous amount of luck with this coral. So I don't know if it's really ideal for a smaller tank. Uh, but they felt comfortable enough putting it into their top 10 list as number 10. And mushroom corals are a beautiful addition to any reef tank. I still keep mushroom corals. One word of caution with mushroom corals, they are known to have the most bacteria on them than any other living thing on this planet. So anytime that you're handling them, it's really important to make sure you wash your hands very well after you're done. Coming in at number nine on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species is the Emerald Crab. These guys are absolutely one of my personal favorites when it comes to invertebrates. They are very unique and have interesting habits. Some of them tend to be very nocturnal, so you're not always going to see them, but they do a great job of maintaining the rock work, keeping it clean, and the tank looking good. So I would agree with Coral Magazine on this one. I think it is a great addition to a Nano or even Pico reef tank. But not only that, I think they're a great addition to any reef tank. However, I will say that it probably is a good idea to make sure that you are not keeping more than one in a small tank because I have seen them become territorial over time. Coming in at number eight on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species is the blue-legged hermit crab. Actually, they didn't say blue-legged hermit crab. They just specified reef-safe hermit crabs, and that's really loosely based. I would say a red-legged or blue legged would be a good variety i wouldn't mix them too much in a smaller tank because red leggeds can uh, dominate the blue legged crabs and for me personally i like the blue legged hermit crabs because as you can see in this picture right here they the colorations that they develop the older they get is pretty unique you have that white red and blue legs with those front crusher claws that get to a very bright orange at the tips they're a very unique looking crab and once they get a little bit established and a little bit older, they become really amazing looking. Coming in at number seven on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species for your nano and or pico tank is the coral banded shrimp. I do not agree with this whatsoever. And a lot of the experiences that I've had with this shrimp is that they are extremely territorial. I, at one point, had a cleaner shrimp and a coral banded shrimp in a 30-gallon aquarium, and they did not get along at all, and that coral banded shrimp was kind of a prick. I think if you were going to keep this shrimp by itself in a small nano and or pico reef tank, I think it would be fine. I, I don't think there would be anything wrong with that at all. And it's probably the best setting for this shrimp. But it does tend not to play well with others. If you buy this shrimp, it's the only shrimp you're going to have. And he's going to make sure of that. Coming in at number six on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro inhabitants for your nano and or pico reef tank is the sexy shrimp. This is one invertebrate that I have never kept and I have always wanted to. Uh, this and the harlequin shrimp are probably the top of my list as far as shrimp go. And from my experience or what I've witnessed of them, they are very, very small. I would say probably an inch is full grown. And usually when I go to a local fish store and I see them, they have them in a tank in a container so they can actually find them when somebody wants to purchase one. So I, I think in a very small nano reef tank or even a pico setting, this would probably be a very ideal invertebrate for that type of tank. Coming in at number five on the Coral Magazine's top 
10 micro tank species is the Duncan coral. I have probably never been a fan of this coral until just recently. I actually have become very fond of this coral and it, it makes for an interesting addition to any reef tank. And I think it's great to see that Coral Magazine is suggesting that this is a good coral for a smaller tank. The idea behind a micro tank or nano tank or pico tank is that your stability is probably not going to be spot on. So what they're suggesting here in this coral is that it is very forgiving and a ideal candidate for a tank that's going to be probably, you know, wishy-washy in its parameters because it's so small and things can happen really fast in a small tank. But that says a lot about this coral. Coming in at number four on Coral Magazine's top 10 inhabitants for a micro tank is the Blastomusa. They called it a pineapple coral, but to me, it's a Blasto, and I have a hard time calling it a pineapple coral. I think it's something else for some reason. I'm not sure why. Awesome coral, very similar to a Duncan. It's an LPS coral. Um, its growth pattern is a little bit different than a Duncan's. It tends to be, it looks more like an a open brain a lot of times. They are known to do polyp bailout, so they actually can uh, let the polyp go from the skeleton, and then it can start all over again in a completely different section of the reef tank, which I find very interesting. And it's not something that you see in a lot of corals, especially LPS variety. A lot of different colorations with this coral. It's very beautiful and very hardy, which makes it an ideal candidate for a small reef tank. Coming in at number three on Coral Magazine's top 10 inhabitants for a micro tank is the ACAN. This is a little shocking to me because I guess my experience with ACANs is probably different than other people's experience. I am 50-50 with this coral. Like this, most of the time, as long as I'm feeding it and I let the tank stay a little bit dirty and it's in the lower half of the tank, it does all right. Uh, but I, I have had varieties of this coral which i've kept in nano tanks before not be successful which i find it interesting that they put it at number three on their top 10 list anyways this coral has many many different morphs and growth patterns and is absolutely stunning there i don't think i've ever seen an ugly a can which a a can can add a lot of color to a roof tank very fast there are also interactive feeders, which can be kind of fun for newer hobbyists. Watching the coral interact with the food is always a good time. Coming in at number two on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species is the candy cane coral. This is probably one of the first LPS corals that I ever fell in love with. They don't have a ton of different varieties when it comes to coloration on this coral, but they are a beautiful addition to most reef tanks and do well in a variety of lighting situations as well as flow, which in my opinion makes this a exceptional candidate for a small tank because in a small tank you're dealing with you know things changing very rapidly and this is a very forgiving coral which makes it ideal. There's a variation just like this, but it has white bands that leave the mouth on the outer rim, which is absolutely stunning. And I actually have one in the water box as we speak right now. Great looking coral, very hardy. And coming in at number one on Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species for your nano tanks and or pico tanks is zooanthids. This variety right here is from Legendary Corals, and it's an absolute stunner. It's uh, blondy, and they actually have this one for sale currently. Uh, I think it's around $30, which I've never seen one quite that vibrant. And it doesn't look like that picture has been tweaked too much, so this looks like it's pretty accurate representation of what this coral should look like. Anyways, zoanthids are an absolute beautiful addition to any reef tank, big or small. And one word of caution with zoanthids, of course, is the paleotoxins. Uh, it's extremely toxic to children, dogs, adults. 
So it's very important to make sure that you are using a lot of caution when you are handling this coral. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for our look at Coral Magazine's top 10 micro tank species, which really focused on corals and invertebrates. Didn't really touch on the fish side of it, but, but in this edition of the magazine, they had a whole different article on fishes for small tanks. And that's one great thing about Coral Magazine. Now with my iPad, I can, I have a digital subscription and I can go back to these old editions of the magazine and thumb through it and read through different articles, which I really enjoy. So if you have not checked out Coral Magazine, make sure you do it. It is going to help you in so many different ways. It's really a great publication. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time right here with a brand new Mad Hatter's Reef video. Until next time, there's plenty more Mad Hatter Reef videos to go around.